Hey, Jeff. Yeah. It's episode 12. I know. Of West Coast Ramble. Whoa. I know. You know, why is it an exciting time, Jeff? Tell me. We have Pope Paul here. That's right. We have an actual religious figure here. I know. We had the altar, really? Yeah. Pope Paul, what's next? Attila the Nun? I mean, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sal, hit that one with a boom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're supposed show. to bail me out of that one. It's too late now. Wait till the next one, though. That's right. We have uh, Pope Paul and the Illegals in here. Hi. And uh, he, Paul was actually in here with our first band, Abby. He was yeah. playing the Tololoche. The big bass. But on this Sal. one, he's, he's got guitar. He was here, too. And Sal was That's here on right. drums. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And then, uh, but <laughs> who's this on bass? Uh, John. John Kavine. So we got John, <laughs> Paul, Sal. Where's Ringo? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's in Nashville. <laughs> He's in you guys probably get that all the time, right? We do, we do. It's true. That was a good one, Jeff, because I That's saw that you wrote that down on your no, paper I, and you just I whipped it out. it, yeah. That was great. <laughs> Anyways, yes, this is West Coast Ramble, episode 12. I'm excited. This is our fourth, <laughs> third band on, right? Uh, I'm getting confused now. Four, well, Han- Hanley, we had, it's Hanley some, played. We had four. Okay. Well, can't this is four. Musical guest. Yeah. And last time we had uh, the Rayford Brothers, and I thought they were going to be all electric, but they came in acoustic. Right. But I'm excited that Paul came in here, and I didn't think he would come in acoustic. Because if you've ever seen Paul, the guy's like standing up on the bass. <laughs> you know, he's like the full-on rock star. So I dig that. You, know? you need the juice with it there. Yeah. yeah. So he's, we're going to have some fun, get all electric. Not but, liquor, electricity, folks. No. <laughs> but, hey, so anyways, before we get started, Paul. Yes, sir. You know how we play this game. We do. We got to do Facebook posts. I don't know if you guys practiced anything for our Facebook post segment, but instruct your men, please. Let's do it. You're not supposed to practice. <laughs> That's all you got. Just the just the beginning just hit. The hit. That's yeah. all you want. Ready? One, two. I want two, three, four. Wait. Facebook post. Facebook. Oh, Jeff, you got no. You guys got you got to say Facebook <laughs> yeah, post. Oh, we get, we get to make the music oh. as we go. I like that. Like each each yeah. segment has us doing the thing. Yeah, that's that's right. Okay. Was, that was hot. <laughs> you know, I gotta that be was, honest. That I always was look t- forward to this because I, you never know <laughs> what's gonna happen. I would prefer, you know? yeah. But you know what? That was the tightest one we ever had. It was. The the, the riff was very oh. tight there. I think you did but, a little. I think a little wood shedding on this. So Mike, we have to disqualify it. But I'm just learning of it now. <laughs> yeah, it was too tight <laughs> for the post. About this. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. Nothing know. was prepared. Oh my gosh, they're they're in the running. The address. Okay, wait. Now just do it again names. one more time, but say Facebook post at the end. Okay. Okay. Do it again. One, two, one, two, three. Facebook post. Oh, yeah. that's better. Jeff, we got a winner already so far. <laughs> I know. We're gonna do. We're gonna do a winner. Whoever gets like the the best segment openings or the best segment uh, bumpers. Your pick of anything in the garage. What do we win? Oh. That's, that's, that's our rule around here. I'll take that Gretsch you have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he means like tires and hoses and uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some old C clamps. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Look at here. Before we get going, and feel free to comment, friends. Uh, yes. We're gonna go through our Facebook posts. All right. And last time we had Hanley Page in here. And yeah. we, didn't, we didn't get any comments on him. He was talking about what it's like to be a musician, working musician for his whole life. But we did get some stragglers who were talking about the altar billies from, uh, we did them two shows ago. Ages yeah. ago. Yeah. yeah. So here's what we got, Jeff. We got uh, Adrian, I'm a second. If I'm saying that right, that's his last name. I'm a lime second. Anyways, it says altar billies, what a great uh, group of fellas. And their music ain't bad either. West Coast Ramble, what a great thing you guys are doing for the rockabilly scene. Yeah. Well, Can that's nice. Yeah. We'll have to send him a hose or something. <laughs> From the garage? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I made it nice. Are cool. no. They are. Uh, okay, so a nozzle. We'll throw in a nozzle with it. But you guys you guys have played with Alter Billies before? I, I recall a farmer's market we played with them we in Santa Ana sometime back. Yeah. They had me sit in with them. It was pretty fun. Oh, you played, uh, what was that? played uh, Summertime Blues That's or something They're like good that. fellas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Were you singing or playing guitar with them? Playing guitar. Oh, right on. And well, that's a good thing about you, Paul. We're trading off. Mike like is a great guy. Um, but yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, that's what I was going to say about you. It's like every time I, I go to a band, like I'm all, who's the guy with the chops? Well, that's Paul playing <laughs> bass. And then you go to another band and like, oh, that's Paul playing guitar. You know, it's like you never know what the guy's going to do. He's cornered the market on chops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More chops than one Him and kind. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. For those of you who don't know, Paul has giant mutton chops. Yeah, I just broke into that long, long road. Uh, Dave let me borrow it for the Altabillies, and it's great. 
Oh, I, really? I really dig the album. Dude, I, I appreciate that. You know, and I appreciate you, Paul, that you're always, like, backing up all the other bands and stuff like that. I mean, you know, for, like, most people in the scene, you're out there really promoting it. So I appreciate that. Well, he stays busy. He used to weigh 300 pounds. And really? Look at him. <laughs> no, it's just all no, this work. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> oh, let's... Hey, not wrong. Then the hunger strike. And the <laughs> hunger strike, yeah. Well, s- speaking of... Uh, also, we've got uh, Dave Valdez wrote in. Uh-oh. And, uh, not that guy. Yes. We... Uh. <laughs> and he's, Dave says, hey, great performance, Johnny X of the Alter Billies. And yes, you guys sound punk and uh, primitive. Two of my favorite things. So Dave Valdez from Echo Sparks. Yeah. He likes it. And uh, the beat and primitive. And, yeah. yeah. I'm sure Dave probably he's, had his punk moments. He did. Oh, he's yeah, on yeah, MTV, sure he man. Did, dude, yeah. Dave what? is a He's BA. the right age group. Yeah. Wait, what did you say about MTV? He was, uh, Dave was on MTV back in the day. Doing what? I, you know, I can't recall the name of his band, Paul. Dean. I, I, oh, this is terrible. But um, yeah, he was his oh, band God. toured with the Adolescents, right, for yeah. quite some time. For years, they were touring across the U.S. And no way, the old Dave he got like around. Four years, yeah, he's, told no, a he's, lot of he's stuff. done it really he's, consistently. Uh, like he's giving me a lot of great advice. Absolutely, he's a man. good. Yeah, yeah. The uh, side note: Johnny bought that. He bought a King double bass from Beatnik Bandito, yes. aka the Santa Ana Spin in Santa Ana. That's our store plug right there. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. you're trying to All promote your show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Our show? The shop. I mean, I mean your shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're trying to promote no, it's our all, show. No, it's all natural. You know. It's all <laughs> natural. <laughs> okay, we got one more thing, and then we're going to get into this music. We're Uh-oh. bantering too much. No. That's okay. I was I like it. Brett Ramey said, hey, great show. Love these guys, referring to the Ultra Billies. Yeah. Hope you have them back real soon. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. A lot of feedback on them. Yeah. yeah. I hope we get that kind of feedback when your band is on next week, Jeff. Oh, yeah. I like that. The Whitwoods. Yeah, Say, what is the Whitwood? Will We're you do the wits. Whitwood wobble with me, Jeff? <laughs> and wood. I, I actually, I think we will. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> All right, enough of this <laughs> banter. All right. Paul, what are you guys going to do? Let me close this door. Let's get down to business. Let me get down to business. Not here. Like Fun, guess. guys. Here, play All music. Right, let's circle <laughs> and close this door. Yeah. And separate us from the... Hold on, hold on. That's good. That's good. Right, Ready, right. begin. Wow. We're going to be touring the South here pretty soon, and we recent in the end of the fall, we toured the South for about a month. So uh, Mr. John Convene, a.k.a. Johnny, John the Bassist, a.k.a. Johnny Oklahoma, measure, a.k.a. the King of the North, you he wrote it. this Go song here, bastard. and it's a it's true story based on our experience in yeah. uh, Texas. This is called The Demon Ate My Dog. <laughs> this is my band leader moment. <laughs>
Jeff, you like that one? I did. It, that was most certainly not unplugged. <laughs> <laughs> are you okay, Jeff, in there with all I'm the fine. instruments no, and whatnot? Sure, yeah. Sorry to put you out there. I'm fine. For those of you listening, I'm in the booth with Paul singing, hey. but Jeff is out there with the rest of the band and all the yeah. uh, amps and everything. That's okay. Feeling like Stuck one of the, the rhythm fellas. section in yeah. this box. It's <laughs> <laughs> getting claustrophobic. <laughs> so anyways, Pope Paul and the Legals, why, why do you guys call Pope Paul and the Legals, Paul? Explain this for once, please. All right. Um, I really, I want, one of my big influences is uh, in the punk world, Dead Kennedys, obviously. I say that's tops when it comes to punk, and you really can't beat that name when it comes to an offending name, especially <laughs> w- when they picked it and stuff. Like, uh, so I wanted, so I wanted something that was like going to turn heads and be a little semi shocking. But then the Pope Paul thing uh, was actually, I went to, uh, Catholic grade school and high school and uh, just you know being around Catholics for so long I didn't have to study or try it you know the religion aspect of studying or whatever and so I'd, I'd be I'd piss off a lot of straight-A students and just you know show up for a test and pass it you know so uh, like a honor world girl named me Pope Paul one day in like <laughs> sophomore year or freshman year actually and the nickname didn't resurface till I was like 25 so <laughs> um, <laughs> So d- another jealous heathen, if you ask me. Exactly. <laughs> um, so we were kicking it around, and it wasn't the craziest. I, I don't think John was too crazy about it at first, but then it kind of stuck. Well, not everybody looks good in them hats either. You know? Hey, yeah, it is amazing hey. that you can actually get these hats in the studio. I know. That I was worried that. about yeah. that. It's a very low <laughs> ceiling in here. Yeah, I'm a short guy. And with so. your feet off the ground like that, you know, it's just <laughs> just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Now you're being silly. Come on. <laughs> it was enough with the hats. Oh. Uh, so, and then, oh, and you guys are also going to tour. Please talk about your tour and where are you guys going. And you guys also, you guys did a tour, what, last summer? Uh, uh, last fall in, in November, yeah, actually. Fall. Yeah, we went, um, let's see, where did we go? All through Texas, man. We were in Austin for about a week playing there, and we played in Fort Worth and Dallas as well. Uh, Saxe, even Houston, too. And, uh, yeah, we played in Memphis, Nashville, what? where else? Oklahoma City. Alabama. Birmingham, Birmingham Alabama. Uh, yeah. Um, you said yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Um, no, thereabouts. That, that. But uh, record our, our album in Mississippi, actually, at Water Valley Studios. Uh, Dial Back Sound. I'm sorry. Dial Back Sound <laughs> in Water Valley, Mississippi. <laughs> My apologies, Matt Penn. I'm sure he's listening out there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he but will like, be now. So what, what, what did the people, like, around the country, like, what, did you ever see other bands like yours? Just so like a, a mix of, like... I don't know what you guys. It's more like Horton Heat kind of stuff, I guess. Uh, did we? We didn't play with too many groups like that. We we, we played with some country bands though. I Joe remember Savage. in Fort Worth, yeah, Joe Savage. He was Shout really out to good. Him, yeah. Great, great artist. Um, who else was there, man? I mean, a lot of the shows were just us by ourselves, maybe playing two or three hours. Um, we were on a few. Bil- oh, the Dead Balloons in Birmingham did join us. Sw- they're more rock uh, as well. Yeah, but they're, yeah. they're touring quite a bit now. And, uh, so, so there. do you do you find because you since you guys have been around the country playing this kind of stuff. Do you find like what the scene in Orange County compared to like the rest of the country? <laughs> what, be honest, like what do you what do you think about? Well, it? Well, like, first of all, like the people come out more. We found like with the the shows over there, like they appreciate like music more. You can tell. So it's like that was cool. That was South. refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's South. just a great culture of music down there, man. Like especially in Texas. I mean, really all these southern states, though. I would say a lot of incredibly talented musicians we ran yeah, across. Sure. And we were able to see which influenced us as well, I think, in the future, and what our sound is becoming, you know, just yeah. getting a piece of that. Yeah. I mean, long story short, I have, like, three songs based about how much I dislike the scene in Orange County and <laughs> how horrible really? it really is. Oh. Man, I like, wouldn't go that far. You gotta be careful you, what you say <laughs> on uh, the <laughs> podcast for what? it. Okay, there's what, what is, bands what is out the here, There's good man. bands out here. Oh, I'm there's not a lot saying of that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. saying no. it's but bands. But but we got well, let him tell it. Let him tell it. There's just not... There's only a handful of, like decent promoters to actually you know put together a good show like I'm a little spoiled one of my cousins is this dude Cra- uh, Craig McGahey and he taught me a long time ago like okay if a promoter tells you to you know get people in the door and to promote the show and push it then you tell that promoter to write you a song since we're going to do his if you're going to do the promoter's job then he can do <laughs> your job and write Ooh, a song I like one. that and that's a good answer I don't know like pay to play really like I don't think the music scene has. We haven't come really back had to do that, that though, you know. Yeah, we've turned it down. Like, luckily, yeah. we learned early to stop, not even mess with it. But like, 
Man, you go into okay. This is my last point. You go to L.A. <laughs> on a Tuesday night or on a Monday Point night. We're gonna have a residency yeah. at the Redwood Bar. Yeah, right. On Monday nights, and that'll work in L.A. But here in Orange County, like, you have to play on a Thursday. Like, people don't really want to go out Monday through Wednesday. I would say yeah. those are the Netflix days. Those are the exact. <laughs> <laughs> Every day on is a uh, Netflix day. OJ. These but guys people. don't sugarcoat it. I'll tell no, you. No, <laughs> they're telling the truth. I hey, I would imagine the Pope Paul would, would speak the truth, and that's what we're getting. That's I appreciate right. that. Yeah, <laughs> But, you know, Jeff, that's what West Coast Ramble is about because you, you can listen at your leisure. Let's say you don't want to go see Pope Paul at the Redwood, Ball on, uh, Redwood Bar on Mondays. You just plug in this podcast and you listen to him at your leisure, whether that's shaving right. in the morning or... You, you don't know. have to wear a leisure suit doing it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. See, that's the... You can, you can wear the leisure suit. No one's going to say anything if they you listen to it. They make me itch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, can we do another song, Paul? Would you mind that? Yeah, why not? Right, let's do that. After all this negativity. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I mean, we love our hometown, but no, dude, you're just we've had a the way truth. better I time in the South. It's in <laughs> San Diego, too. San Diego and L.A. County, really, it's just like the orange curtain, man. you got to break out of it, like yeah. my favorite phrase. Riverside, all we'll right. get there eventually. Riverside is, <laughs> I say Riverside already getting maybe. there. Yeah. Well, anyway, since we're talking about the South and our love for the South, this is a little love song that I was inspired by down in a... Texas, or I don't know how, however you want to by, phrase By a that Southern Bell. By a Southern yeah. Bell, that's how you say it. I was inspired by a Southern Bell here. You know, and like a, another genuine music lover, you know, who just like went out and supported, you know, just because she likes psychobilly, rockabilly, and it's a rare breed. Yeah. It's, but it's cool. Anyway, I'm going to shut up here. This is called Up in the Clouds.
got me up in the crowd. You're so easy to miss, my missus. You got me up in the crowd. too critical of yourself. I think you're making good music out there. Hey, <laughs> thank you, man. I think the same of you, Mr. Tom. Oh, well, I don't think you talk about your band enough. Yeah. I know, Lux I need to old talk. I know he does. Now. Well, that's what I like about you, Paul, because you're a good promoter. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be good at something now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know, well, hey, you know, I got something. I'm curious. So Uh-oh. you were really good in school? Like, you're really smart? <laughs> <laughs> no. Not at all, no. Is that what you were saying? Whoa, no, no way. Uh, oh. I would never study... Like I would never study for these really intense like religion exams. Yeah. Like and like I would still probably pass with like a C or B, but like I would just make the A students mad. Like I was up all night studying this theology stuff, and you just show up, and I'm like, I mean, I've been doing it my whole life. I should know. Oh. Something. Well, he wears glasses. He must be smart. I know, right? <laughs> Stereotype <laughs> in here, man. Now I was a horrible student. Like I was always on like. Grade probation. A good music student, though. I'll say I that. Was all right at we that. were actually classmates. I don't know if we mentioned oh, that. Oh, really? We were. Yeah. We went to the same high school. Modern day high school. Oh, right on. Yeah. A good football school. That's pretty oh, much yeah. all it is. Well, these so are the modern money, times. The money didn't so. go to that band room, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I wanted to. Oh, those rats say well, though. No, that's okay. We got a good education there for oh, sure, man. We did. John we got, did. We got an excellent. <laughs> well, a good, a good musical education as well, though. I mean, yeah. you know, a good yeah. education. Shout out yeah, to Dominic Mumolo, Anthony Vasquez. Yeah, <laughs> yep. big guys. The love. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So, and as far as influencing, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm curious too. Like, I'm trying to jump. What? Sure, sure. What's? Did I mess up something? No, we're no, just no, having no, fun. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure. No. Uh, okay. Influence talking about because you guys. It seems to me like uh, here's the here's the evolution because I'm a little bit older and Jeff is of seasoned a age. A lot a bit older, you yeah. know. <laughs> and, and you know, look at like our friend Dave Valdez starts out in a punk band, kind of hard, and then he ends up doing Echo Sparks, which is kind of cool and melodic. Okay. Yeah. Now, same with you, Jeff. In the '70s, don't deny it. You long hair hippie. You're playing rock and roll. And of now course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, now you guys are playing more melodic. Uh, Jeff West and the Whitwoods, yeah, very I tasty. I still like all the same stuff. What? Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, those guys rock. <laughs> no. Okay, no, okay. So, what do you see, Paul and the Legals, or, you know, if you guys stand for like 10 years now, if you if you went 10 years from now, what would you guys be playing? Would you guys be sounding like the Eagles? Oh, oh Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's no, no. no, I'm just curious. Like, wh- I, which, I enjoy which taking Eagles. Easy, I enjoy <laughs> Eagles of Death like Metal? The, I like the, oh, yeah, maybe, maybe that. that one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> okay. That's a cool one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, seriously, like, wh- where, where do you see your guys going? Like, if you're going to make another album or the next one after that, would you guys change your style or would you guys keep going in you the know, same direction? You know, the thing about this, because we honestly had a lot of other influences as well. You yeah, know, that's what I mean. You guys have a Our ton albums of now are sort of a mix of, like, psychobilly and swing music. You know, we're influenced by, like, Pokey Lafarge and Squirrel Nut Zippers and these guys, um, as well as sort of country, like yeah. Hank 3 and the original Hank Lowe, you know, all this, like, outlaw country and, you know, as well as the rock. So, but even beyond that, we like a lot of like punk music, like Paul said, the Dead Candies earlier, and even metal. You know, everything from like Iron Maiden to like the Melvins now. So, I mean, even when I was writing that Demon Ate My Dog song, I was like, what would the Melvins do if they wrote a Psychobilly song or something like that? You know, like there's certain elements of the music that are sort of metal, but you guys have noticed that because I can't do it. But anyway, <laughs> don't, um, <laughs> don't change anything nah, except right. your socks on a regular <laughs> basis. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, I, who knows? Maybe down the line we'll, we'll start incorporating more of that stuff along with the rockabilly and, and the swing and, you know, whatever stuff we like. So. Yeah, it's cool. Like, I, I, it's like a mix of, I hear all that stuff, like yeah. the rockabilly and the swing, but it's got like that young punk, you know, punch to it, which I, I appreciate, too. you know? Appreciate that, it's kind of cool. Like, I like each band has their own take on it, and that makes it good. Like, if everyone sounded the same, it wouldn't be good, you know? Nah. Yeah, it's trying to do a little bit different, but, I mean, yeah. you know, there's all, all these psychobilly bands that have been doing that stuff for years as well, mixing rockabilly with punk music and metal. Yeah. I mean, the Rev as well, who's a huge influence, has always been doing that too. So. Yeah, yeah. That was like, that's really my main outline when I started this band. Well, really, 
I was in an, another psychobilly band, and like they, sh- we would shoot ourselves in the foot because like, everything had to be a hundred percent like psychobilly. Yeah, or, well, it didn't fit in that genre. Yeah, or, like we couldn't get away with doing a, a, a swing song or something. You know, like even though people want to, it's almost in the same basket. But then, you know, I see the Rev. He does his psychobilly stuff, then he kills it at country stuff. And yeah. His swing stuff, like he really became popular in the swing and that sweep when they when swing came back in like the '90s, he was messing with all those guys. But then what really inspired me with him is like he'll back up Jello Biafra, he'll back up Deke Dickerson, he'll back up. Uh, I'm like drawing a blank, like uh, anybody, like uh, Wayne well, Hancock, unknown he's Hinson done it. And Who's that? Unknown Henson. Unknown Henson. Yeah. Mix of like this Americana with elements of like rock music and metal. And Sh- horror. Speak, speak on the right side of the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there you go. That's it. Can no, no, no. Split the no. difference right there. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Go, man. But, uh, no, that's that's why, like, we love it when Abby sits in with us because we just, yeah. we love, like, we want to get more guests. We I just, I don't know. That's just, like, a really good attitude to have with a band. Yeah, no, like, and you're, ask, you're asking about, like, Lex, our vocalist in our band. If yeah, I would, that would be way cool if she sat in with us. Like, yeah. um, our friend Sarah from Jackrabbit Jade, she sat, she sits in with us now when she yeah. can. Um, I'm trying to get, uh, like Big Sandy, it's a it's a tentative, it's a possibility for that residency at the Redwood, um, or Deke too. Yeah, I've reached out to him, so cool. we'll, we'll see if he says yes or anything. Cause, yeah, I mean, I've seen him use other bands. He just uses any band he can get. <laughs> he does, <laughs> man. He flies off to Japan or yeah. Spain. And he's like, he rounds them up, you know. Yeah, well, that's cool, man. Yes, hey, he well, do. Well, this kind of leads <laughs> us into our influence, Uh-oh. which is we're gonna do song of the week. Okay. So, friends, if you don't mind, could you please do a jingle for Song of the Week? Let's, do, uh, let's just do one line of uh, Join the Cult. Oh, just the one, two, I want two. I want two. <laughs> Song of the Week. That was a good one. That was good, too. Jeff, if we had to grade which band is doing the best segment opener bumper, guys, I, think I might have to uh, go with the Pope Paul guys here. Uh, yeah. Uh, on the way out of here, I want you to take a look in the garage and just see, just try to eyeball things, which you, you know, which you might want to take home. Yeah, you know that uh, socket set. I was you looking at that. Part set on I was the looking at that on there right now as I, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I threw the. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I was, right. I was eyeing that New Yorker oh, so guitar. The, the New Yorker. <laughs> that no, stack dude. of laundry oh, yeah. by the dryer, though. I'm like, they, they need that. to keep that here. <laughs> Sal's yeah. trying to take my guitar. No, the guitar goes in the studio. You can't have the stuff in the studio. It's in the garage. Well, there's a fine line between garage and studio, I think, in this house. Yeah. You know. That's true. <laughs> so you got two records, Paul. Why did you bring two records? Well, so this is the inspiration song, uh, for this band at least. And I brought a 45, and I brought the album. Anyway, this is a Reverend Horton Heat song called Bullet. And... Uh, the 45 is actually his first release uh, as the Reverend Horton Heat that wasn't a compilation or it wasn't, you know, yeah, I mean, it wasn't a compilation album. So this is his first pressing as the Reverend Horton Heat. And Jimbo or uh, Taz are not on this yet. It's uh, Smiling Jack on the drum, on the upright bass. And uh, who's the drummer? Swinging Smiling Jack and uh, Bobby on drums. So uh, this is just a little taste of the first track, but I fell in love with the version off of Smoke Em If You Got Em, which is the Reb's first full-length album. So here's a little early bullet. What year is this? This is 1988 bullet, the year before I was born. Chambers. Lapper, and one of the first times the Rev uh, met Jimbo, uh, Jack let Jimbo borrow his bass, and I guess Jack and Jim Heath, the Rev, were uh, arguing about like a Roomba slap, like on 20 Flight Rock, and Jack would be like, nah, it's impossible, you can't do it, and like the first thing Jimbo did was like did that slap, he didn't know that, but, and so the, the Rev just kind of looked over and was like, oh, it's impossible, huh? And uh, eventually this bass player quit and tried to take the band down with him, but then Rev hit up Jimbo and says, hey man, you gotta move up to, uh, you gotta move on up to Dallas, I think. I forget where Jimbo was living, and uh, Jimbo did, and the rest is history. Hey, 
They live there to this day. They live there to this day. But here's the cooler version with Jimbo on it. All right. And slapping. Again, the reverend. There's more religion to the show. It's just and like, I, a, like a theme, theme going on That's here. amazing. That also helped me pick the name Pope. I was like, well, yeah, I like I the I was going to ask lot. that next. <laughs> <laughs> but not really, not exclusively for that. Yeah, Reverend sounds more approachable. Pope is intimidating. Nice. Paul's an intimidating figure, I think. Most of <laughs> <laughs> the men would agree. more about the robes. <laughs> It's all legal. It's all legal now. But, uh, <laughs> and like that song would come on, and once I heard it once, I was just like, "Damn, that's a really good song." And yeah, and you I you got that in. you got that album all signed and whatnot, right? I have like pretty much my whole collection by the Rev is signed. So, an awesome side story is uh, I opened for the Rev a bunch of times with my old Psychobilly band, but before we did the Illegals, and uh, I never met him because there was always band drama or something. Like I was just always distracted. Um, so finally, I went to see them do the first Horton's Hayride um, in Long Beach, and it was oh, it was a killer show. It was the first time I saw Jello Biafra sitting with them, Lee Rocker sat in with them, Slim Jim sat in with them. I think Big Sandy was there too. Um, anyway, but after that one, I just was like, hey, I wonder if I can meet these guys. And I went around and I saw the bus, and Jimbo is the upright bassist. He was just standing around, and he literally talked to me for like 30 minutes and I was just asking him about his bass and he literally he turned me on to Blast Colt you know which I, we love Blast Colt they help us out sometimes I get to help out Jason but uh so he turned me on to the Blast Colt and uh the next time I came the next time they came to Orange County I had already been helping out Blast Colt a little bit so just for a little bit of reputation they let me be a roadie 
So I went to, I was a roadie for him at the observatory, and that's when I really got closer with Jimbo and Jim. And uh, so Jimbo was like, I was helping him set up his base, and uh, he was having a real hard time juggling his upright base and messing with the settings on his amp. So I was like, hey, man, if you want, I'll just slap it for you while you set it up. And he's like, that would actually help. So I did that, and then he's like, oh, and after he was done focusing, he's like, oh, good slap. Like, what songs do you know, yada, yada. Long story short, they let me sit in on that song Bullet during the sound check. And then uh. when the show came around, they're like, hey, you want to sit in for the real show? Uh. And I was like, uh, <laughs> that's all right. yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, that's so, awesome. Uh, so now Jimbo gets me backstage. I've literally had – John's seen it once, too. I got him back there. I, I literally just sure. shamelessly take my collection. Like, hey, guys, sign these. Thanks. Yeah. Well, sure. They love it, though. He owns it's everyone. Tumbling. I'm sure of it. That's, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I used so. to take album covers. I've had you tour. sign. Yeah. I have, I've had you sign some of my albums, Jeff. You signed in my own garage. In your own garage. <laughs> <laughs> when I failed the. I don't get out shit. much. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I'm I love being a nerd and getting stuff signed and. Oh, yeah. Me too. Love, you know, well, you know another thing. So I was looking on. Uh, Facebook was it six months ago, and you were in the car with Wanda Jackson hanging out with her. I was. That, that um, was the trippiest thing. Like you're all, I'm hanging out with Wanda Jackson, and I'm like, what? Is he like just checking out her band? You know, because she was playing. And then like, there's a picture of you hanging out with her in the car. So yeah, uh, it was. Uh, we had the honor of opening up the SoCal Hoedown. It was the first time in Santa Ana. We got to oh, right before Slim Jim. Like it was awesome. That's right. So. Yeah. Uh, with like a week to go okay well i guess the tie-in with that is sellout productions uh they put on the hoedown yeah and they're good promoters they know what they're doing um they support us really well like they they're putting on a killer blaster show this saturday but anyway um they hired me to drive the rev around for the second hayride so i picked up i drove him around and the unknown henson and the crew the revs crew really liked me i was like cause i showed up to work you know i wanted to um so, because the unknown Henson and Jim and everybody said that, you know, I was like, I wasn't a creeper or something, you know, I was just like, <laughs> I did my job. Yeah. Um, so he was, I guess, he the line. I guess sellout oh, yeah. was like, they were desperate. They're like, hey, will you do me a favor and will you run Ron- Wanda Jackson from her hotel to the show? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do you a favor and <laughs> do that. And uh, <laughs> it was like one of the most humbling experiences I've ever, ever had. Like, What'd she think of that hay truck, though? <laughs> 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 I had to have a low car. That was part of the stipulation. <laughs> but, uh, um, man, it was just so humbling to see the way she came out of the hotel and got in my car. And, like, her husband is, like, this bulldog. He's so nice. He, older dude. Wait, like, older gentleman. But, like, making sure that she's taken care of. And I was like, do you guys both want to sit in the back? He's like, no, she needs to sit shotgun. It's easier. I'll sit in the back. It's fine. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, hell yeah, man. Like, um, and then I pulled up to the hoedown. I got rolled out of my own car by her band leader. Like, hey, you mind if I talk to her about the set really quick? I was like, go right ahead, man. <laughs> but she was really nice. She signed records for me and told me stories. And yeah, she's nice. She was just so. Uh, it was really a humbling moment. Like I'll never forget it. Like yeah. So that's cool. Like you, yeah. you get to meet a lot of people. Maybe you're you're just in the right place at the right time, or you make I it work. Both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm in the right place at the right time, and sometimes I just relentlessly bug people or like you know if you want something you gotta attack it you do like, yeah, it's a good yeah. way to stay that way yeah so well what i would like is another pope paul song. another song yeah all right all right gentlemen <laughs> so this is the spiel i give about this song this is a a song about being stood up by a beautiful girl multiple times we call this one what a dame
Western swing that's for you. That's good. I don't remember you playing that before. That's on a, when I saw you guys. Great. Thank you, man. Yeah, that's dude. a good song. We it appreciate is. that. That's it's playing all the way around. album entitled uh, "The Dial Back Boogie" is going to be the name of that album. Oh, right on. Wow, Jeff. Now that's surprising to me because I thought these young guys were going to be doing all these uh, more aggressive musical tones. The youngsters on our show. Yes, but they've proven <laughs> that they can do uh, an eclectic mix of cavalcade. I'll of say. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. That yeah, was good, man. Nice good work. playing all the way around. But don't get a big you head, young man. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so hey, what else is going on? What with else? Our sh- what, you were going to say that you brought in another record for for your 78. What was that 78? I did. So uh, that was a little Western swing, as we, we, we've uh, mentioned. And there's like, there's like a touch of yodel in that song. Not really. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm really fortunate that like how I got into this music it's just uh, is th- through this. My great grandparents, my great grandpa Paul, who I'm named after, my great grandma Alta, I still live in their house. Um, yeah. As I was a young kid, as a baby, the way I learned to speak and sing was by listening to old Jimmy Roger tapes. And I loved trains and train songs. And uh, we'd go down uh, Santa Ana Station and watch the trains go by. And we'd always put in a Jimmy Rogers record. So I was just, I brought a. I bought a 78 that I inherited from my great grandparents. Yeah. That's a Jimmy Rogers song. A 78. A 78, wow. ladies and gentlemen. We don't mess around. Here. I like it. When you yep. own a record store, you're fully addicted. So, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please play on. Dig it out. <laughs> I can smell the Bakelite now. <laughs> Listen to that scratch. Makes me hungry. I'll see that you don't walk I 
We've had played on this yeah, thing. That's cool. That's man. the original I, Jimmy Rogers, yeah. not the cheesy Jimmy Rogers. I like him too. Like him. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool because I got that Pokey Lafarge his first CD too, and I'm all, God, that's, that's cool. But one, yeah. yeah, but like, where's it coming from? And like, you, that's yeah, that record that's right there. Yeah. The voice for I, sure. I, I yeah. met him the first time I met him. He had a. He had a Jimmy Rogers shirt on. I was like, yeah, dude, yeah. I know this is why you're one of my heroes. Like, he he yeah, even yeah. dresses like that. And and he stuff. does. Yeah. He sings just yeah. like him, man. Like, yeah, Pokey does not mess around. He's a really nice guy. Well, that, that's a whole, that, is, isn't he uh, Oklahoma as well? He is. He's St. Louis. Like St. Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the yeah. whole area. So like don't him. poke fun at him. No, <laughs> poke. <laughs> don't poke. No, I mean, that whole, because I spent some time in Oklahoma, and the scene is different out there. Like, oh, er, everyone loves, you know, like J.D. McPherson, but they love Wanda Jackson. And, like, you can see. Like all people, you don't have to be all dressed up to go dig Wanda Jackson. People think of her as like an Oklahoma treasure. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. 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 And like Pokey Lafarge, all those guys like that are just, they just have like a soul about their music, you know? I love that. Maybe Orange County needs some more soul. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> now you got me all bagging on my <laughs> own county. You know I'm right. How dare you, sir? <laughs> How dare you, sir? You were, okay, from what, we, from what you've talked about with like at the, uh, when the Abbey Girl was in here, you grew up in the right time in Orange County, dude. Like, you had social distortion going around. Oh, and, like, yeah. You had the good punk. I'm not, like, they're good. Like, but, I mean, that's just, like, the one band I could think of, like, Fullerton. But, like, you grew up in a good time with Well, and there was Groves when I grew up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still. No, we, had, we had some good stuff. You know, you had the No Doubt. I love No Doubt. Yeah, they're good, too. You know? I, just, I, I saw them play a while back. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it doesn't work out with me and my wife, I think I'd probably try to go out with Gwen Stefani. <laughs> <laughs> She's my age, you know. Yeah, yeah you guys have a lot coming. Yeah, same age. You got it aced, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So, do we miss anything, Jeff, with these young people? God, I'm missing a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, wait, before That's we a, go. It's all been fun. It's fun. I'm just. Yeah. yeah, what's next? Well, well I know they got another song, but... Okay, we, we're going to do one more song. Oh, we got to do our... No, let's do our last song. But, hey, Sal, what have you got to say? You said, like, two words all day. What's going on with you? <laughs> I don't know. I don't have too much to say, usually. <laughs> he just parties really hard. Yeah. I just like listening. He's an introspective man, you know? He's Yeah. Guess, That's it. Yeah. Cut his mic off right now. <laughs> 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 and I want to know where your pompadour is, young man. Nah, <clears throat> nah, nah. But he want he wants to grow it out, and I want him to grow it I'm out. Trying, yeah. It's at yeah, the yeah. groomers. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, a question. Yeah. So Jeff West, what are you doing on a Wednesday evening, man? Oh, this Wednesday. That's yeah. right. I'm I'm in. I'm gonna be in public with my band, are the you, Beatnik Bandito. Are you advertising on West Coast Ramble? Well, he talked me into it. <laughs> That's one of my favorite bands. Man. Come on. Okay. 
You got well, it. Thank you. Got to preach it up to no, <laughs> Mr. West. We got, we Nobody gotta, knows us. We got to fill the beat, beatnik bandito. Yeah, we do. Fill those. I'm yeah. hoping to get, I talked to Gene, I'm hoping to get you guys to come sit in with us on that residency up at the Redwood Bar. Oh, that would be wonderful. Oh, I'm done I like the, I, when I was a fly right, we played there a lot, and yeah. I, I really liked that It's a place. great bar. Like, yeah. the first time we played there, Bill Bateman <coughs> sat in with us. Like, yeah, he did with us. He just there hangs there out. He yeah. just hangs out, yeah, yeah just partying. He's, it's a great place. It is a really cool The space. Redwood Burger's even really good. I haven't been there. Even with all that bark on it, you know? It's just... <laughs> <laughs> I walked into it. They do have a red ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, they, didn't, they, really have a, they didn't like the joke either. We're, we're going to shut this so you don't have to talk to Jeff. <laughs> what's the, what's I like uh, Jeff. <laughs> oh, demented. Oh. Wait, you want, is that what you want to do or what? I, I, I'm down. I, li- I enjoy it. All right. Sure. This will feature this band a little bit, the sexy right. band I have behind me. Paul, oh, it's PG. Fat Sal on the drums. <laughs> That's what we call him, Fat Sal. Yeah. John, the bass is on the upright bass. Right. I like to say that I'm an idiot savant. Hold the savant. <laughs> Go ahead and kick it, Sal. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> One, two, three, let's do it. Sal adjusting his headset and keeping the beat going. One, two, three, let's do it.
guys really know how to play your instruments. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's like cool. to play. Yeah. <laughs> hey Jeff, we're almost done with West Coast Ramble episode twelve. Is it? I, yeah, and it went by all too quickly. Yeah, but you know what? We got to do one last segment. Yeah, we got to do coming up next week. All right, and these guys are good at this. These jingles, <laughs> all this, all this pressure <laughs> though. Oh, they, man. They've got yeah. yeah, this could yeah. They've me. got they got two pluses. Let's see if they can yes. keep it going. Ready? One, I two, so. I want two, three, four. <laughs> Ah, yeah. That was a rough one. <laughs> okay, do it again, but you got to say coming I, up next week afterwards. Ah, that's how you did. All right, one more time. <laughs> Let me, I'll start it off. Ready? All right, with the riff. <laughs> Coming up next week. Oh, I think we have winners. Yeah. Oh, my I gosh. Think. You know what, Jeff? The season isn't over. Your band's going to try to hit it next oh, week. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. That, but, hey, and that means what's coming up <laughs> next week is your band's coming up next week, Jeff. Yay. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, Jeff West and the Whitwoods. It's an eclectic mix of country and... Um, uh, sing song. What would you call it? Sing song. Sing song. Yeah. I don't Western know. Swing. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no. It well, sounds toy like. No, it's not toy like at all. It's, it's a lot of songwriting, a lot of clever lyrics. Like when I see yeah. your band, you have to like listen to all the, the storytelling that you're given in the music. Well, listening helps, yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, you know, like some people just all, I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like the closest no, thing to Dylan and the band yeah. around nowadays. Yeah, well, I think so. thanks. I'm, a whole lot for that. Yeah, man. I, was, I really I'm I'm a really huge like fan of that. Style. Thank you. It is excellent. Yeah. Well, no, I like There's a place, man. I really that one hits me. It's a good. Oh, it's just a place. It's just a place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, of course, too many we cover there's a place too. Well, I, yes, you do. Yes, you do. But this is your show. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> Back to. But no, well, coming up next week, we do have Jeff West and the Whitwoods. Yeah. Great songwriting, great musicianship. I like it. Good stuff, Jeff. Well, we'll see how we do with the jingles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see, see if we get your guys to try to beat morning. these guys. Yeah. Go head to head. They'll come yeah. following us. One day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's what we got. And then um, let's see. Can I tell you next week what we got? Here? Yeah. What do you got next week? Well, we're gonna be. Well, this won't air in time. Maybe. Maybe it will. We'll be at the Pike this Friday night. We won't. It won't air by then. It won't air by then. All right. In two weeks is when in it's gonna. Air. Well, in two weeks we will be in Texas. We will be. What? Stu- I guess, yeah, in Texas. We're in coming weeks, for you, we're, we're coming yeah. back for you. We love you. Cool. All right. That's all I got. Have a Dr. Pepper County, for though. me. <laughs> it's a love-hate Let's know what Paul said at the beginning. We love you, too. <laughs> and all, and all you Orange County promoters, we've never loved you more. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you guys Good can make us. it back into town. Yeah. I hope when Anthony's in around for summer, I'd like to get him in here with us. We're a different oh, band. Yeah. We have him on, on the lineup. So. Oh, the oh, X right. Factor. The X Factor. The Stania Factor. That's how I'd heard you before, yeah. Uh, you did. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And you liked it better, right? No. I'm no, <laughs> it's just, it is different. No, but it is different, though. You're right. I, yeah. It is way different. Yeah. Brings class into it. That's cool. Well, I've seen you guys with, with Anthony. <laughs> classless otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> this is the shoot yourself in the foot guys here. Yeah. I, no, no, you guys are good. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Like you played with Anthony before, and then I yeah. think you had a sax player before. Oh, as well. Stephen oh, Wood. Stephen Wood. Can't, man, my good friend Stephen Wood. Man, he just played a show at Out of the Park Pizza the other night um, with us and uh, with his Stephen Wood quintet. Amazing, like kind of jazz and neo soul, really grooving, like jazz music. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So check that guy out That's too, Stephen Wood. Watch him out. He's a All star right. on the rise. Maybe we can get him in here. <laughs> yeah, let's we do it. We could. All. He plays with Abby Girl as well. Yeah, he yeah. Does. yeah, I think I saw him with you guys in Abby. Yeah, yeah. He'll play yeah, with us again. Oh, yeah. probably at our Cherry Pop and oh, Daddy show. There you go, John. In Good April. Boy. Yeah, at the Yost. We're opening up for the Cherry Pop and Daddies. I think the Rhythm Shakers yeah. are on it. Uh, some girls. other great hula girls as well. And uh, Stephen Wood will be there. So no way. don't oh. come out for us. Come out for him. Maybe a whole kind of horn, horn section. Is that at the yet. beach coma? Yeah, I was talking, no, I was talking to some Yost. friends about oh, that. Yost. Yeah, we may have a horn section, the Pope Paul oh. horns. And wow. I'm not sure what their name is yet. We'll think of something clever as it comes to It'll be something coming now. Yeah. Well, that's what the that's what the swing community <laughs> needs. They do. They really do. Tom. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Wow. All right. the, the brass nuns, you can call them. <laughs> Instead of brass <laughs> knuckles, yeah. that's that's right there, brass I'm gonna get struck down one of these days. <laughs> oh, well. uh, I, don't, oh, yeah. I don't. I don't mean it bad. Any of it. It's okay. all right. We'll see you down there, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Buddha, God, whoever you are, don't, I, I don't mean it bad. Yeah, we're getting theological here. Yeah, a little bit. With Pope Paul. I mean, you should expect it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Well, I guess that's it for West Coast Ramble, episode 12. What, Jeff, what do you got to say? I was a gooder. Right. I liked it. Any last words? What's your favorite color? Mm-hmm.